is a biblical understanding and dynamic that is required to deliver a nation. If you're aware of uh, any, most of you are, the condition of our nation, we need to move about. And so Gideon gives us an example and some insight. Uh, we ministered on the uh, uh, Israel had become plundered by the Midianites. They'd been overrun. They'd been impoverished. And there was two reasons in Judges 6, verse 10, you have not obeyed my voice, says God. The last verse of the book of Judges says everyone did what was right in his own eyes. So both this combination caused the nation to be ravished, plundered, overrun by their enemies. And then we see the angel of the Lord connects with Gideon. And we understand God chooses common people. He said, my tribe is the weakest of all the tribes of Israel, and I'm the least. He was a farmer. He was hesitant. And then God said, I want you to build an altar to me, but I want you to tear down the altar of Baal and the image, the idol that stands beside it, and there I want you to erect an altar for me. When we build altars to God, it tears down the idols of the world. It's a very powerful tool. Wherever you build an altar for God to inhabit, you automatically give your own and cast down the idols of this world and the images of this world. And this was triggered by God's people crying out. They were crying out in their anguish. So God heard and began to move. <clears throat> and so today I want to focus on Gideon. How did he create, what were the dynamics of this personal relationship with God? I mean, he studied his life. It's very interesting. He has some questions. There's insecurity. <laughs> He's unsure of himself. He's fearful. The whole fleece thing, and we may get to that back and forth. Huh? And yet, here is a man that's used powerfully to break bondage with 300 men and bring liberty and freedom to a nation. I want to focus on another truth this morning. Altars accompanied with offerings move God to reveal Himself to you. I'll repeat that. Let's see that in the Word of God. Wherever you build an altar and you bring an offering, it could be you. Something that's sacrificed on that offering. Something in your past, something in your flesh had to die. Whenever you do that, it's like, and this is throughout the Scripture, it moves God to reveal Himself. It's easy to say, you know, the man upstairs, you see, in the, well, I think the man upstairs, well, who is the man upstairs? You need a revelation of who God is. And so I want to look at Judges 6, verse 18, you know, and it begins with Gideon speaking down through verse 24. The angel of the Lord's appeared to him and began to talk to him. And he, the first words, basically, out of his mouth, Do not depart from here, I pray, until I come to you and bring out my offering and set it before you. The Lord said, I will wait until you come back. So Gideon went in, prepared a young goat and unleavened bread from the ephraim of flour. The meat he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot. 
He brought them out to him under the turban tree. Presented them. The angel of God said to him, Take the meal, the unleavened bread, lay them on this rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of his staff that was in his hand, touched the meat and the unleavened bread, and fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. The angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now watch the revelation that comes. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to him, Gideon, I want to give you a revelation of who I am. Peace be with you. Do not fear, you shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is peace, Jehovah Shalom. The Jews always, Shalom, peace. To this day, it is still in Orpha of the Absarites. Father, we come by the blood of Jesus. God, I pray, give us revelation of who you are. God, give us understanding, God, of your nature, God. Your holiness, Son. You are the God who heals, saves, and delivers. God, may we know you in a new dimension. In 2021, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In this text, Gideon built an altar and brought an offering in place for it. As I read, the angel of God is speaking. He's already spoke. He said, I'm going to send you, Gideon. I'm going to be with you. I want you to go. I'm sending you. I'm going to empower you. And hear his first response to all of this. Wait right here. Don't move. Don't depart. Wait right here. I need to do something until I come back and break out. It said in verse 18 my offering and set it before you. Offering is something you prepare to bring and sit before God. Your offering represents you. Your offering speaks of your heart. It speaks of sincerity. It speaks of desire. When you lay your life on an altar, you're, that's a reflection of an internal compulsion and compassion in heart. God, I surrender. I lay down my life. Gideon had said, prepare the young goat and unleavened bread. Put the meat in the basket. He brought it all out, the broth. Think of this. He says, my family is the least. Remember we preached and you've read the Midianites have overrun the land. They always came in at harvest time and they would steal and rob all the harvest. It said there was, it goes on to say there was no donkeys, there was no oxen. Everything has been stripped. Verse 6, Israel was greatly impoverished. And the means of support has been taken. So this offering would have been a great sacrifice. It's a goat. It would have taken time to prepare. It would have had to go into the home. That's why I said, listen, listen. Don't hasten away. I, I want to bring something to you. He would have had to slaughter the goat. He'd have to bake the, 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 the tortillas. Amen. <laughs> 2021. He's bringing all of this. I wonder if he had a wife there. What would she be saying? Our family. You're, you're killing our goat. This is a young goat. This is our future. This is our security. We've been hiding this goat. We've been protecting that this goat is valuable. An offering to who? To God. Gideon, are you crazy? Don't you realize it's a hard time? 
Whenever you build an altar and you bring an offering, whether it's you, and we'll talk about some of the things God moves to, when we offer, whenever you do that, there is always opposition. Of course, the demonic despises alterings, altars with offerings. Even our own reasoning many times. This is not a good time. Especially if you carry sacrifice. Could be, you know, I'm going to live for God. Could be I'm, I'm no longer going to be involved in crime or stealing or lying or cheating. I'm going to be a faithful man and woman. It happens, it's across the board. Uh, but you have to understand there's always resistance at this point. David, the Bible says, a man after God's own heart. He had great insight when it came to offerings. There was a time in David's life, there's a huge plague that has swept across Israel. 70,000 men have died because of this plague. And David said, I have to build an altar. Listen, altars can stop plagues, especially when there's an offering plague. <coughs> 2 Samuel 24, 21, David said, he's going to buy the threshing floor. He said, I'm going to buy the threshing floor from you to build an altar to the Lord that the plague may be withdrawn from the field. Verse 22, Arona basically said, here, here it's free. Look, I have oxen. I have utensils for wood and fire. I have threshing implements, some uh, yokes, some. Uh, let me give it all to you. And listen to David. No. I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord of that which cost me nothing. I've heard me say for years, if it means nothing to you, it means nothing to God. We don't move God by offering our leftovers. He said, how can I expect God to respect an altar and an offering that didn't cost him anything? Remember Cain and Abel. Abel brought an offering of blood, the lamb, firstborn. Cain brought the fruit of the field. Nothing really died for that God said, Cain, I have no respect for your offering. And Cain was outraged. He said, Cain, if, if you do right, you'll be accepted. What kind of offerings are you preparing to bring before God in 2021? This born, being born again is somewhere you created an altar and you laid down your life. Your pride, God forgive me. Altars are in place when we bring our offerings and make sacrifice. Paul 12, 1, 3. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I want you to bring your life, your body, your physical, and all that represents, I want you to lay that on the altar. This is reasonable. Your offering is you. There are people here that have laid down their plans for God's plans. That's called sacrifice. Because there's a cost factor. Nothing seems to be more valuable to God and moves God than when you and I bring that 
it's cost us something. He's mentioned on the leash again. Went to the Philippines a few years ago, basically from California. Of course, today that might have been a blessing, but when they make a good choice, it didn't seem like it. Going to a foreign country, we were over there on an outreach team. I've been to the Philippines many times. It's it's it is another world. It's another world. Think about Abraham offering Isaac. Genesis 22 2. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, in which I shall tell you. He said, Abraham, I'm looking for a sacrifice. I'm looking for an altar with an offering that you love. Real offerings many times are defined by what you love. Have you ever offered something you love doing to God as a sacrifice? Something you love owning? Something you love participating in? Sometimes it's offering Somewhere you love going, I'm not going there. Sometimes it's someone you love being with. I'm going to offer this relationship. I don't play cards anymore. I don't play spades or face in. Rarely once and once and once in a great blue moon. I'll play one game with Connie. And a number of years ago, I remember we used to go up. Some of you remember we used to go up. Uh, uh, camp out uh, on the rim every year, and we play spades all night long. And uh, if you know me, I'm pretty competitive. <laughs> all this time been going on. And I said, oh, that's it. I just went, that's it. I'll play a game. And basically, I haven't played since then. I enjoyed it. Have you ever laid something on the altar? I remember when I got saved, you know, it wasn't hard really to pour out the Jack Daniels and, you know, get rid of the roast clips. I broke some out of my bike, I'm telling you. My bike, I mean, I mean, there's nothing like having all that horsepower and you're straddling it. It's totally different than an it's different than a bicycle. There's something about that power in your harness on it. I, that is as far as I can go with that description. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just an explosion. And, and look at the image. And I remember, you've heard me tell the story. I'm standing on the street. I'm just saved just a short time. And these friends of mine, they're all there on their bikes and they come up and call us. And I said, and I've been witnessing this. Not I haven't been witnessing it, but I've been witnessing it. And they, and they knew that. They said, listen, you have to drink. You're stride with us. And, and, and they're pressing me. And they outnumber me. And I finally said, no. In fact, I'm going to sell my bike. And I didn't mean to say it. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about saying it. It wasn't like I'd been praying. God, I mean, it just come out of my mouth. And, and, and I, it had to be a God moment. Because in the natural, I wasn't about to say that. But when I said it, I'm thinking, <laughs> but something broke in the spirit realm. The moment I said that, all of their arguments, all of their tempting, all of their, their insistence, and they, they rode to the west. And I turned and walked down the street. I had, I prayed, I never, I never shed any tears again run down my face. And God whispered, son, if you'll be faithful, I'll cause you to preach in the nations. I, that was not in my mind 
wasn't something that God had whispered or I've been, I have no thoughts of preaching in the nations. I offered something that was like an identity to me. I offered something that I love your Scott Lamb's testimony. He loves to play guitar. The Bible gives him lessons online. But when he first got saved, he said, I put it away for a year and a half because it was my life and I loved it. He said, I want your son, Isaac, give me. I don't want your boy that you can't wait to get this guy out of the house. My Lord, good Lord, take him today. Yesterday. No. He said, whom he loveth. And Abraham went to the mountain. And you know the story. He drew, he, he's going to go through. He's got the sacrificial knife. And the angel of God stops him. There's a lamb caught him. And he got revelation. The Lord himself shall provide a sacrifice. And scholars believe that very spot is where later Jesus Christ is crucified. Think of this. When you bring offerings that things you love, uh, important, precious, valuable people, it has a whole spectrum. When you lay that on an altar, there's a revelation about the future. There was a revelation God said, I'm going to provide the sacrifice. I'm going in time. I'm going to provide my son, Jesus. You provided your son. Now I give you a revelation. I'm going to provide my son. This offering of Gideon's moved God to respond and reveal himself in a dimension that Gideon had never experienced. Cause fire to rise out of the wall, rock that consumed the sacrifice. Doubt is being stripped away from Gideon. Verse 22, Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ incarnate in the Old Testament. So Gideon said, O oh Lord God, I have seen the angel of God face to face. I have seen God like I've never seen him before. I've seen his face. I've seen his features. I've had this powerful personal experience. That was triggered by an offering of sacrifice. And now I know God like I've never known Him before. Altars that you build and present offerings that you love seem to move God to reveal Himself to you. Think with me. This revelation of God has nothing to do with Gideon's circumstances or his conditions. His circumstances are totally contrary to his revelation. Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is peace. What, what are you talking about? The Lord is peace. Gideon, your whole world is upside down and it's going to go ballistic. The God of peace in the next verse is going to tell you to go tear down the altar of Baal at your father's house and destroy the image and the whole city is going to want to kill you. I'm calling you to go to war, but I'm revealing to you I'm the God of peace. His life at this point and going forward 
reflects nothing that appears to be peaceful. His enemy massively outnumbers him. He's not trained and equipped for war. He has no history of warfare. He's not a general. He's a farmer. And yet God shows up and says, peace is going to be with you because I'm with you. Listen, it's amazing when you build altars and God reveals himself right in the middle of all your craziness, right in the middle of all your mess, your world spinning out of control. God shows up and says, I'm bringing peace. Don't fear. You're going to survive. Baby. I'm bringing peace. It's not based on what's happening. It's not dependent on your surroundings or circumstances. It has to do with your relationship and your revelation of Jesus Christ. Too many people think peace is linked to their bank account. Jesus in the Bible declares in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. Then he qualifies it. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, Neither let it be afraid. He said, I have a peace that is nothing like the world defines peace. Are you looking in the world trying to find something that can only be found in Jesus at an altar? I was borderline insane. I was violent and I enjoyed it. That's what some people don't understand about being violent. It can be fun. It's, it's, it's exciting fun to go crazy. I, I'm serious. I, I'm just, I'm in a VFW. I'm shooting bull for money. And uh, it got kind of nasty. I grabbed a kiss stick and jumped up on the table. I said, let's get it all. What 24 hours later, the bartender, a friend of mine, Coke Wallace, he was a doctor's son. He was there. Woody was the bartender's name. And in those days, they had these jars that had little tickets in them. It was a form of gambling. They paid 35 cents for a ticket. If you peeled it, and you could win. It was not a lot, but you could win a few bucks. My friend Coke Wallace got an argument with Woody Reed over 35 cents. And Woody pulled out a pistol leg right here. And Coke said, you're not bad enough. That's like 24 hours after I was standing on the pool table totally crazy. In hindsight, it's scary. You think of I prayed a prayer at an altar. Romans 5 1, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You can't find peace in the world if you're at war with God. I don't care where you go. What you do. Ephesians 2 14, for he himself is our peace. Gideon lives in a pagan world that has basically annihilated his income, his security, his freedom. And yet God says, I'm going to give you peace. 
Paul again, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the people of God, which surpasses, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. He said there's a peace of God that's beyond understanding. You can't calculate it by your conditions or your circumstances or the world. Peace comes by dominion. And dominion is linked to your relationship with Jesus Christ. Malaysia. Boy, and Isabel, of course, were there. Isabel's here with us. She can tell you what I'm speaking about. It's a Muslim world. It's an Islamic world. It operates by fear. There's a demon spirit of fear that saturates the culture. My family and I had no visa. We were tourists for two and a half years. We'd have to go in and out like some of the workers in India. We'd have to go in and out. And when you come back through customs, especially if they start seeing your face, and it's stamped on your passport every time you enter and leave. And that's, they just kind of give you that cold, dead stare. But you know what? It was a peace. Had nothing to do with the culture of that nation. Paul's saying, Jesus Christ has a peace that passes all understanding. You can't buy this with a credit card. Knowing the right people won't give you this. You can be so good looking and scary. And yet no peace. You can have talent flying off of your fingertips. Michael Jackson. Talk about talented and fame. I remember being in the Malaysia. They're in a the mall, and here's this these Malays. They're, they're so packed, I, I, I couldn't get through them. And I'm wondering, what in the world? There's all these young Malay men. There must have been two or three hundred of them packed in this mall downtown. And I, it was thriller. I mean, they're enraptured. Talk about fame. And yet he couldn't sleep. All of that fame, all of that fortune. I wonder if he would have traded it all just for a night of peace. Peter is in a storm. Sea of Galilee, thunder, lightning, raging waves. It'd be like you and I in a hurricane. Jesus is in the boat sleeping. It's, it's an incredible story. I mean, amen. It's, it's, he's sleeping in a hurricane, we can say. And Peter goes down and says, Jesus, don't you care? Is that what you say? Jesus, don't you care? My rent's due. And I have no money. My wife, who's been praying for a number of people, thinking about Sandra, she's in the hospital with COVID. I can't even go see her. Lord, don't you care? Amazing Jesus can sleep through this horrendous noise of raging waves. And yet he hears Peter. He hears Peter simply say, Lord, don't you care? Listen, he cares. He can hear you. I mean, your world, I mean, Peter's world's exploding. Talking about, we're not talking about some ocean liner. You're talking about a little boat. And they're out there. These storms are notorious. They come off the mountains there and sweep down into the Sea of Galilee. And I mean, gorgeous. I mean, these waves and roaring and wind. And, and, and he said, Lord, don't you care? Don't cause all the noise in your life to make you think he can't hear you. Or 
that he doesn't care. He heard him. Mark 4.39, he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, listen, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Do you realize who's in the boat with you? Are you looking for peace in all the wrong places? Are you losing it? You're out of control. You need to build an altar and get a word from God. Think of this. Three little words. Peace, be still. Peter's whole world. People spend millions on drugs, entertainment, Eastern religions, all kinds of various activities, just trying to find some peace. And yet, three words from Jesus. One altar, and the God of peace shall die. Will you build that altar? Have you built it? What is God saying? Look, you need to lay this on the altar and I'll reveal myself to you. Let me close. That same night after this altar and this offering, God spoke purpose and destiny to Gideon. He had already been told to go and to be sent, but now God gives the details in the destiny. There's always details. The practical. The starting place was God. Now it came to pass, verse 25, that same night, the Lord said to him, I first got saved, I, I taught a boys Bible class. Boys Bible class. He's talking this morning and Pastor Joseph about the rapture, the urgency. The rapture gave me an urgency to do something for God. Two years I was a youth pastor. Had a Holy Ghost for God. So many people getting saved, God bless us. Pastor worked, he was like a manager, had part owner in the store, Cecilia got a church. We went full time because of the need, but my point is, God first spoke to me. You know what my first, I went down to the fishing dock, Lake Beach, me and Dion Thompson, five in the morning on Sunday morning. These, all these guys fishing, they had to come for gas and petrol, minnows. The captive audience. I love captive audiences. They couldn't leave. And we would preach to them every Sunday morning down at 5 a.m. Preaching and witnessing. Except Dion played the guitar and sang. We asked these people to get us a little electricity to have this old man on fire. God said, listen, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. He tells Gideon, I want you to start at home. Verse 25, I want you to tear down the altar of Baal that your father has and cut down the wooden image, the idol. That is beside He said, I want you to go home and clean things up. It's powerful. I'm the God of peace, and I want you to go home. It's, it's going to be intense. Uh, they wanted to kill him. Remember? The town, the village came out. Said, Who tore down our idol? And thank God for his father. They said, Gideon tore down our idol, Baal. And his dad said, Why are you here? If Baal's real, God let him defend himself. 
nothing since. He walked away. But watch how he did it. And I'm closing. Judges 6, 27. So Gideon took ten men and did as the Lord had said to him. He did it by night because he feared his father's household. There will always be people along the way to destiny. Do you support other people's ministry? What if these ten men have said, oh, I want to do that. I wonder if Gideon would even be in the Bible. Do you refuse? Thank God these ten men. Whose destiny are you supporting? Whose calling? Can you gather ten men to help you? Pastor Mitchell told me years ago, Camel, be nice to people on your way up. Because one day you'll probably meet them again on your way down. <laughs> That's encouraging <good> one. <laughs> what he was saying, when you when you when things are happening, you need to be nice to people. Because these same people will be around when things aren't happening. And you may need them. Are you a people person? Do you look for the lonely? David's mighty men of valor. Verse 7, 22 to 2. Everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered together to David. If you'll notice when God decides to deliver this nation, I may preach on that soon. He keeps cutting the forces until it's down to 300 people. 300 people. 10 people. David's mighty men of valor. When you first saw these men, they weren't mighty men. It said they were discontented. They were in debt. They were distressed. Can you gather people? Who gathers to you? Do you build an altar and bring an offering that moves God to reveal himself? This will change your world. That's salvation. I knew nothing about God. I had no clue about God. Get high on drugs and say stupid stuff. Where did the LSD You had these spiritual experiences. They were demons. But you think it's God. When you stop all this crazy stuff and all your stolen. <laughs> but I prayed a prayer, and just like many, many, many here, you prayed a prayer, and God showed up. The Savior, the Deliverer, a miracle worker, the Eternal One, showed up. And gave you a new heart, a new life. Why? Because you said, I'm going to make my own personal offering and I'm going to lay my life down. God, sorry. You're here. You bow your head for a moment. You're here this morning. And you need to pray that prayer. See, I can talk about Jesus. Your family can tell you about Jesus, and we enjoy doing that. But to know Him personally, somewhere you have to build your altar, and you have to lay down 
That's where the personal revelation comes. That's where the personal call comes. That's where God becomes so real that people don't have to encourage you every week to live for Him. Because you have your own personal altar experience. Give Him. going to be the instrument for 300 people to deliver a nation and begin an altar. You're here this morning. I wonder how many of you be honest before God, Pastor, that's me. I need to build an altar. I need to lay my life down on an altar because I desperately need to know God. Not just about Him. Not just some ideas. Or not just some words. I'm talking about a heart experience. Born again. Hey, that's, a, that's an incredible term. To be born again. Be born all over again. I mean, that staggers the mind. But that's what happens. When you personally build an altar. God, I'm sorry. You're here this morning. I wonder how many can say, Pastor, that's me. I really need Jesus. I want to know Him. I need forgiveness. I need a new life. You lift your hand. Just lift it up. Lift it up. I see your hand in the back. God bless you. Thank you. See your hand up here. God bless you. Who else? How many more? Just lift it up. Lift it up. God's speaking to you right now. Four. There's others. There's others. I see your hand. God bless you, dear. Thank you for your honesty. Who else? That's me. That's me. Others, others. You join these and say, that's me. That's me. That's me. I need to get it right with God. Who else? Who else? Backslider. Backslider. That's me. You lift your hand. You lift your hand. I once knew God, but I'm a long way off. I see your hand. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? All of those who lifted your hand, would you lift it up and hold it? Your hands lifted, would you lift your eyes and look at me? You sincere with God? I believe you are sincere with God. If you're sincere with God over here, let's get up out of your seat to come. Someone's going to pray with you. Would you come? Someone's going to pray with you. Someone's going to pray with you. Someone's going to pray, pray with you. These ladies coming over here. Someone's going to pray with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I ask you to stand with me. Do you need to build an altar? I want to open these altars. You need to lay something you love before God. Maybe someone, some place, some activity, something you own, something that holds great value. Say, so God, here it is, and I'll lay it down before you. I need revelation. I need revelation. I need revelation. I need revelation. I need, revelation. I need you to reveal yourself to me, God. I need personal, personal, personal. You want to come with me? So I got your seats. You may be seated. This is change your whole world. Let's pray, church. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, God, you cable, Rama, God, save this nation. Oh, Rama, Shibble, Lebo, Lebo, Shibble. Oh, God, you cable, Lebo, Shibble. Oh, Spirit. Oh, God, you cable, Lebo, Lebo, Shibble, Lebo, Lebo, Shibble. We are.